today has brought together medical research for, uh, from the field, from across the MSF movement. Uh, this is operational research addressing field problems and trying to improve the quality of care that we provide to patients and populations. It's one of a series of events. Tomorrow we have the Innovation Day. There's the South, South Asia Day on, the, on May the 27th, which is also online, and you can get details on the website. And the Southern Africa Day in Malawi on June the 20, 22nd. Now, this one is not online. And I just want to remind us again, once again, about our online audience. Uh, we have been joined throughout the course of the afternoon from, from Uzbekistan, Zambia, United Arab, Arab Emirates, South Sudan, Slovakia, Peru, Israel, and Palestine. But no one has joined yet from Laos, Argentina, or Greenland. So if you have <laughs> friends and colleagues in those countries, remind them they're, they're missing out, and they can still join in tomorrow. I, I, I get the chance to say a few words just to draw out a few, a few themes from today. Now, I know everyone would pick on different themes. There was masses to pick on here. I, it's always impressive to see the, the commitment and the rigor shown by uh, field researchers, staff in the field, trying to, trying to tackle problems in difficult settings and producing high quality research. And I think it shows a real drive not to be satisfied with what we're doing and actually always to be pushing that bit further, both in terms of getting better information, understanding better what the problems are and making sure our programs are working and just trying to take us one step beyond what we're doing now. So I think you know, we often consider ourselves to be arrogant in many ways, but I think this, I think this also shows a humility, a re realization that we don't know all the answers and we need to keep pushing further. And, and so if I pick out a couple of themes that were, in a way, challenges that were brought up throughout the day, um, I, I think we should see them as encouragements, encouragements of how we can take that extra step. And the first one I would draw out is, is information, is around information. It's about what we really need in terms of information and in what circumstances, because we know it's difficult to gather information in emergencies and we have, we have divided priorities. But if we think carefully about each stage throughout the the intervention, maybe the, the, the extra thing we need is not so unachievable. When we think about assessments, knowing where we are now, can we, can we manage to get those population counts, the, the denominator that enables us to take all the further steps? In terms of monitoring and, and evaluation, yes, we need to look at quality and impact. Are we also looking at availability and coverage? And when we think about the, what we saw about the access for male survivors of sexual violence, are we able to also think about coverage and are people that managing to get into these, these services? We, we, th we think about information for improving use of resources, uh, the clinical risk score that we saw, a very good example there that could actually enable us to use what we have uh, more efficiently. And then, of course, information for what is not, is not only for action, it's also for advocacy. There are situations where we it, it, it's, it's advocacy above all that is going to make a difference, maybe. I and mean, when we talk, look at the, the fact that 68% of Syrian refugees, uh, it's the cost of care that is the, the, the barrier for them. This is information we can take to ministries of health, to other agencies. And I think then finally, and just in terms of information, occasionally we need to understand. And we often think we understand. We also have often discussed today how we don't. Occasionally, we actually need to look at the how and the why, and not just why are patients not coming to our facilities, which is often the problem that we send anthropologists to deal with. And, and actually, uh, that's, uh, I think many anthropologists would say that's actually not how you use an anthropologist. But, um, <laughs> but it's, also the, it's also the how. And how. I mean, how is this experienced by patients and how is this experienced by health workers and I think we've seen in several examples today we, we can learn a lot from looking more deeply and it was nice to see some qualitative research studies on, on that. A second theme that I want to bring out is around impact. Uh, I've, we've heard the word several times today and of course impact means different things to different people. We need to think about impact on what when we are designing our, our studies. Many observational studies were presented today, many qualitative studies that can and should lead to a change in practice in MSF. And often that is what we are aiming for, and maybe we're aiming sometimes beyond MSF. But there were also examples of studies today that have tried to address policy change. And of course, we know that, uh, as, as we saw with the last study, an, an incredible RCT that uh, uh, is 
uh, likely to lead to policy change. Uh, maybe I shouldn't talk too soon, but uh, uh, but and yet, I mean, sometimes we are implementation driven. We we implement first, and then can we still do things in those situations? As was shown from Uzbekistan, can we? We may not be able to have a a, a, a placebo controlled trial or a randomized, a, a, a full uh, a full full prospective controlled study. But are there things we can do in those situations to actually uh, show the the, the impact of? of what we are doing. And then, the, and then finally, I'd like to just say a word about partnerships, because uh, Dr. Mahmoud taught, taught to us about that and taught to, reminded us to think of partnerships beyond just engagement. How do we actually uh, engage actively, not just once we start running into problems, which is often when we start to think about community engagement, but actually right from the start in terms of co-defining priorities and co-developing solutions. And I think that um, partnerships with community, we often talk about that and we often end the summary with that. But I also then want to just remind us that it's, yes, community, of course, this is absolutely critical. Patients, the, the population we're trying to work with, absolutely critical. Let us also remember our own staff, our own field staff that was brought up several times today, and actually our, our own headquarters staff, because this isn't just medics doing research in isolation. Uh, we are doing research in, with many partnerships, and I would include operations, I would include logistics in that. This is a, research is a core part of our operational response. And it's, it's been nice for me to see several members of our e-desk here today, our, our emergency desk, who actually published their first article in Lancet Global Health today, which was on unexploded remnants of war. I encourage you to read it, and it's just a reminder that it, medics don't own research, and this is a, a collective endeavor. It's all about improving what we do. And it's all about trying to stay humble and actually know we know, don't know everything and we can always go one step further.